So I've gotten this question quite a bit over the past few months in regards to basically editing videos in conjunction with Anime Studio. And that is, can you chroma key or how do you do it or is it possible? How does it work? And yes, the short answer is yes, you can chroma key in Anime Studio or you can start the process in Anime Studio, I should say, and then move it over to a video editing software. So for those of you who don't know, chroma keying is essentially the process in which we take a color, let's say in this case green, and we remove it from the video. From there you could place things underneath the video. You could place other elements, you could place pictures, images, whatever, within the video editing software. Now that's a very basic example of what you can do with this. There's much more advanced stuff you can do with it, but since we are just learning here, I thought we would start off with the basics. So what I have here is just a simple animation of a character walking across the screen, Mr. Benick, and that's basically all it is. It's really simple. I did it really fast and just as an example. Now, you can use any color for this when you are doing the chroma keying process. Green and blue are popular, especially in film. That's because of the way, basically, how film deals with color, um, depending on which type of film you're using or if it's digital and so on. In this case, I chose green because, number one, it's a popular choice, but number two, his pants are blue. So if we had a blue background and we went uh, to eliminate, eliminate the uh, blue from the video, we would be taking his pants along with it, which isn't good. So once you have laid out an animation and you have a solid color background, again, preferably green or blue, we can go up to File and Export Animation. From here, you can choose your different settings of how you want to export. I keep with the QuickTime format. It seems to work best for me. I'm sure AVI would work in this case, but again, QuickTime is the one I choose. And then you can find a place to save it. And for the compression type, I would try to keep with something that has the most colors possible. Animation seems to do that. You can choose millions of colors plus. This is especially important if you get into really, really detailed stuff and you really need to have you know that color difference between the, the green background versus whatever is going on in the foreground. But just make sure you choose a compression type that has a lot of colors. And once you've done that and rendered it out, we can pop over to our video editing software. In this case, I use Premiere. That's just the one I'm comfortable with. You could use Sony Vegas. You could use Final Cut Pro. If you want to just strictly you know, go with effects and all that kind of stuff, you could pop this into After Effects. Basically, however you decide to edit this. I'm pretty sure that the video editing software, as long as it's you know fairly advanced, will be able to accommodate what we're about to do next. So I've imported my video file, and I can just pop it onto my timeline right here. Whoops, we gotta make sure that we have it towards the beginning here. There we go. And you can see the video is on screen. He's walking, it's green. So if you are using a different piece of software, this should be very similar, but in Premiere, I have an effects tab right down here. And if I scroll all the way down about halfway, you can see that there is a keying folder and right underneath is a chroma key option. I can click and move this over to the clip that I want to affect. You can see when I did this that he lost his eyes and mustache and such. That's because the color it's keying out is white. And we don't want it to be white. We want it to be, of course, green. To e the easiest way to do this would be to click on the eyedropper, find the color we want, and then click. You can see now the background has been eliminated. And from here, there is other options we can use because right now it might be kind of hard to see. I can zoom in a bit here. But you can see that there is green surrounding him, um, basically. Not all the color was removed. And we could, for instance, take this blend option and we could try to blend it in. And you can see that really definitely helps. You don't want to go too far because then you start to 
kind of fade out the character a bit. But you can kind of mess up these options and basically try to clean up basically the rest of what was left behind here. And then from there, once you have cleaned up the lines, you can, well, for instance, I'll nudge this video up to the second video track, and I'll just bring in a simple image. You can see now we can edit this so he can basically walk across the screen and there's a giant dog in the background. Now, again, this might not be the most useful thing in this case because you can easily do this kind of stuff in straight in Anime Studio, just bring in images for backgrounds and such. But again, this is more for advanced editing, which I can kind of explain here in a moment. Now, there's one more way you can do this, and this is actually the way I prefer. Let me just pop back here to Anime Studio. So, you can, of course, chroma key out colors manually and all that kind of stuff. But, let's see here. I gotta, oops, I want my layers. There we go. Change my screen to resolution for this tutorial so things are a little bit moved around. Okay, so for this particular animation, I have, of course, the green background on layer one. Let's say I, I, I uh, eliminate that. I just remove it. And so we just have the default background color that you have when you open up the software. There's not basically nothing in the background. Well, if you export out the animation like that, and then we go back here to Premiere, and I can eliminate these two clips, and then bring it in, you can see that we don't even have to go through the chroma keying process. It basically just exports the video out with just that element only. And this is only done, as far as I know, with QuickTime. You have to make sure it's a QuickTime file in order for this to work. but that way you can avoid that whole process altogether and then from there you can just basically bring in your image once again and boom you're good to go it saves you a few steps so now why would you do something like this you know besides what i just did here with the image well for instance in my latest cartoon i did which was i guess back in october i gotta start making more cartoons i guess but um i did a lot of things where I exported out separate characters and elements for certain scenes to color them differently. It was a very simple thing, but I wanted the aliens to glow and I wanted Benick to be look like he was, you know, kind of in a dark setting, so I would color him differently. And then I would color the background differently. So I exported out all the elements separately. And then I compiled them in a video editing software and then I stitched it together and exported it out and you know, it was good to go. So that might be one benefit to this. And of course, there are several other benefits to it as well. Basically, things that Anime Studio may not be able to do for you, you could take it to the next step and put it into a video editor. But anyway, that is my tutorial on chroma keying in Anime Studio. If you would like to see more tutorials, free tutorials, you can visit IncredibleTutorials.com. I also have a premium tutorial site that has much more extensive lessons, and you can visit that at IncrediblePhiles.com. And finally, if you need private tutoring on anything, on a personal project, business project, school project, whatever, anything animation related, you can check out IncrediblePhiles.com and schedule a private tutoring session. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.